Look at this crowd, nice. You couldn't put any black people in the front? What's going on? You trying to get me canceled? We got a whole table of black people. Why, why, why and behind the camera? Turn that camera around. I want you on that guy the whole time, okay? Who fucking is producing this? Tonight, he is self-producing his own comedy special. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Tyler Fisher. Thank you, wow. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Man, it's so, it's just nice to see, it's nice to see your faces. It's good to see your face. Not, not all of you. Some of you should really keep the masks on. It's about 50-50, you know? You remember forgetting your mask? early on in the pandemic, you get on the subway, no mask. It was like having your cock just hanging out. You're like, oh my God, I'm sorry. How many kids have I exposed? Sorry to all the grandparents on the subway. How's that? You remember people would do shit like that? They'd walk down the street and see you and go, oh. Sorry. What are we doing? <laughs> they act like they just saved your whole family. Okay, thank you. Is that how they have sex? They forget a condom? They're like, oh, just take a piece of paper, just hold it over a little bit. <laughs> hey, we don't need a condom. I have a Chinese-made medical-grade uh, piece of cloth here. Uh, droplets can't get through. <laughs> it's so funny to see how every state handled COVID differently. I just toured, man. I, w I was in Texas. They're like, man, if you get COVID here in Texas, the doctor will kiss you on the mouth. <laughs> Cup your balls and whisper in your ear, it's in the Lord's hands now. Get back out there. <laughs> then I go to LA. They're like, I was in jail for nine weeks for sneezing near a baby. I don't understand. <laughs> I'm not a fan of war, but you know. If it wasn't for the war, we would, you know, we'd be on our third wave right now. So we gotta credit, you know, credit where credit's due. I don't know. It's kind of weird timing, right? It's a weird timing. If that war didn't have Fauci would still be on the TV right now. Dr. Fauci, you said two weeks to flatten the curve. What I actually said was we are too weak to flatten the curve. It's not Misinform disinformation and misinform disinfo misinformation. If it wasn't for the war, he'd be on TV right now explaining why we need our 30th shot. You know, the first shot really is just to loosen up the vein and sort of get it ready for the second, third, and fourth dose. The fifth. Sixth and seventh are really to create a FISA community within the body so that the eighth, ninth, and tenth feel seen and heard. Eleven and twelve are just placebos, and since thirteen's an unlucky number, we go right to fourteen through twenty. When you're gonna wanna switch it up and get a J and J or AstraZeneca to create some diversity so that the immune system doesn't get canceled. So. Yeah. Yeah. Once 110% of the country is vaccinated, then we can dig up the deceased, revaccinate them, then individually vaccinate every sperm in the country so babies come out pre-protected. And then as far as reopening, once we end racism, get Putin out of power, start up Will Smith and Johnny Depp's career again, we can start thinking about the idea of pondering the possibility of conceptualizing the notion of reopening around Christmas 2059. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. Okay. Yeah, all right, got it? 
think when Dr. Fauci's fucking his wife and he's about to come, he goes, I'm about to spread my droplets. <laughs> Here comes the viral load. Just something that I, something I always wondered. I didn't handle a pandemic uh, very well. Guys, I'm 19 years old, just to give you an idea. Of, uh, wreaked havoc on me. I, maybe before the pandemic, I was clean shaven. I was like nine inches taller. I come out of this thing looking like Kurt Cobain fucked Zach Galifianakis. That's my, it's like, oh, it's my great reset. I, I don't look good. You can't wear a suit when you look like, I look like a fucking homeless guy just found a hundred bucks on the ground. Just like. You know what's great about looking homeless is homeless people no longer ask me for money on the street. It is such a vacation. It really frees up the, even if they ask me, for, I just out homeless them, you know? They're like, make it, uh, 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 some money. I'm like, money. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. That's what you gotta do. There's no cops in New York anymore. You gotta protect yourself. Everything's about politics, obviously. It's funny, people don't even know my politics based on my appearance, right? Like, I could be a barista at a fancy cafe or the leader of QAnon and nobody knows. <laughs> How great is that? The far left and the far right have come so far they just look exactly the same. I'll look like the CEO of hunting. Right? You don't know I wasn't at the Capitol. Picture a little face paint. You don't know I wasn't that guy that stole Nancy Pelosi's podium. <laughs> what if we get into a civil war, which seems probable? How are we even gonna know who's on what side? <laughs> Each side is gonna have to have like their own like very obscure questions only one side would know, right? Like some far left guy sees a guy who look, looks just like him. He's like, hey, hey, put the gun. You on our side? You a lefty? You Antifa? Don't shoot, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a lefty. I'm on your side. Yeah? Yeah? What's a macchiato? Oh, uh, uh, I know. It's a small, uh, small fox. God damn. Damn it. What are your preferred pronouns? Uh, he, ha. Who, what, when, where, why, beep, bop, boop, god damn. Ugh. Ugh. The far right, they'd have their questions too, right? Hi, 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 put the gun down. No, their guns would be way bigger. Who am I kidding? Put the fucking gun down. Put it down. I got six billion rounds. Answer me this. What's the best knife to use to skin a deer? Yeah, I really don't believe in eating man. Did I get him? Look at him. Fucking vegan, so light. Look at him. I'm a little out of shape, guys, sorry. I had the OG COVID, so I have some breathing problems. The original kind. No, I, I, I didn't get the vaccine because my pediatrician said I was too tiny, so that's the truth. Too risky. Too risky. Too fucking risky, you know? Like, sir, how tall are you right there? Six six? Yeah, this is what the fucking syringe looked like coming at me right there, huh? That's the scale. You want five of these? Huh? Can't do that. It's tough, man. It's tough being a tiny guy. No one cares about the short struggle, right? 
People are like, you're just an oppressive white man. I'm like, I can't even ride a roller coaster legally. I don't know what. I'm wearing kids' clothes, okay? Catching pedophiles all day, just walking around. Oh, hey, little boy. Give me the candy. It's not a, f it's not a fun life. <laughs> It's tough dating when you're small, you know? Like, I can't hit on a girl at a bar with these little legs. Are you kidding me? <laughs> What's up, girl down here? What up? <laughs> Can I buy you a drink, baby? What's up? Barkeep, two milks, please, and whatever she wants. <laughs> whatever she wants. <laughs> and now on the, the dating apps, they changed it so women can put their height requirements on it. Yeah, I literally had to change my height to millimeters just to trick women into dating me. Like, oh, he's 3,000 millimeters, that sounds tall. That sounds... Must be European, I think that's... And they do it there. And here's a little secret, ladies. Tiny guys, better at sex. Hear me out, hear me out. A, we're just more desperate, okay? We'll do filthy things to you. We'll do anything. Limited option. We only get one shot a year. We're going in. Okay? She knows what I'm talking about. Right? We, we can reach places you can't... We can fucking get... Are you kidding me? We can get... There's a third hole you don't even know about. It's this third hole. This fucking third hole, okay? Only the tinies can get it. Also, just geographically, we're just closer to the vagina. You know, we just have a sense, it's just that we're just, it's right there. It's always there. And, and women, what, what's the main issue, right? Men can't find the, the what, sir? He gave his thumb, he goes, you're not gonna find it like that. Babe, anything, babe, anything? Called the hitchhiker. <laughs> the clitoris, right? And, and you know why? Because guy, the, the guys you're fucking, their hands are too big. Not me. Look at these little clit grabbing claws, okay? <laughs> I could find the clit in the dark over four pairs of snow pants, okay? I'll find it. This is to scale what a clit is to me. Where is it? Found it! <laughs> the tall guys. You, you know, you want your man to go down and he's got to take his back brace off. <laughs> me? Babe, go down on me. Ding! Right there, all right? I can sneak up your pant leg and just eat you out as you walk, you know? I'm just saying. I had a woman break up with me because of my height once. Also had a woman break up with me because of my genitalia. I am not only unvaxxed, I am also uncut. I am very European, okay? I am all natural. And I had a woman break up with me. She goes, I just really don't like all that extra unnecessary skin. I was like, I'm sorry, have you seen a vagina? That's the main ingredient. It's basically a skin jellyfish. I don't even know how it holds itself up. Extra skin, are you kidding me? <laughs> if a vagina had an ingredients list, it would just be skin, 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 flap, more skin, 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 and yeast, of course. So. No, come on, come on. Why, why do vaginas have yeast, guys? It helps our dicks rise, that's a baking joke. I heard there would be some bakers here. It's a baking joke. It's primarily a baking joke. Can't cancel that joke, it's... <laughs> Any skins in here? Who's got the hood on? Where are you? I'll find it, right there in the back. There you go, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. Is that your girl? Yeah? It's pretty good, right? Yeah, because he can feel his dick. That's why. Millions of nerve endings. Find me after the show. I've got a support group. I don't like it when people call me uncircumcised. They go, oh, you're uncircumcised. Uncir 
You can't un something that just is, okay? This is the original. This is the 3G of dicks. It's dick and choppy dick, okay? That's it. That's it. Well, we don't use that kind of vocabulary for anything else. It's like, oh, hey, you got a new car, a sedan, okay. Ooh, it's uh, unconvertibleized, okay. Got the hood on there. Oh, it's European, I say, yeah, it's more common. Let me ask, did you have to clean it more often, or? No, I clean it the same amount anybody with any other car once every three weeks, okay? So. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to meet a woman, you know, off the apps, you know, in the wild. You gals on TikTok? Yeah, I'll find you. Love TikTok, I'm so addicted. I just think it's a shame because TikTok would have been such a great name for a dating app for women in their 30s. Um, I hated that joke. I don't know, I've been single for a long time. My friend, he goes, dude, you're, with the look you're rocking right now, you should get on one of those religious apps, one of those Christian mingle, right? I would kill it on there. I'm not religious, but with this look, are you kidding me? <laughs> Imagine me showing up to a date like 30 minutes late, just casual, you know? Hi, Kath. Sorry I'm late. The train was down, so I had to take the river. Just walked across, so. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little wet. You want some wine? I got a flask here. There you go. All right. Let us pray you fuck short, guys. All right? Jesus was short. You know what? We got some religious folks in here or what? I'm not religious. I stopped going to church when I was uh, eight years old. When I was eight years old, this is a true story. My priest blew his brains out at the altar. Yeah, not on a Sunday, it was an off day, so. <laughs> I didn't see it, but. It scarred me though for a long time. I thought about that, I still think about it, you know, every once in a while, you know, cause I'm like, damn, were my blowjobs that bad? So. Anybody single during the pandemic? What is this, an asexual meetup? What's going on? <laughs> Dating was, uh, man, it was tough. We regressed like hundreds of years, right? We had to like meet outside. We couldn't go near each other. Every, every Tinder message I wrote sounded like I was writing a love letter in the 1600s. Just like, dear Catherine, oh, I don't know. I'd like to inquire as to your interest to meet me in the flesh. Should you feel safe, of course, I'll vow to keep my distance at least six feet. I wouldn't dare lay a hand on you without your consent. Hashtag me too, me too. Uh -oh. As indoors are closed, perhaps we can meet in the park under the rusty bridge near the moss-covered pond. I'll promise to have you home by curfew as Lord Cuomo has induced on a great city, that fucking douchebag. I'm sure he'll be out of office in due time. Let me know if you're free in a fortnight. Sincerely, Tyler III. P.S. If we both get vaxxed, would you perhaps be down to fuck? P.P.S. I also have syphilis, AIDS, and polio, and I just did nine years for murder, but no one seems to give a shit about anything other than COVID anymore. <laughs> it's just so hard to meet a woman, ask a woman out when they had a mask on, you know? It's a lot of hidden information under there. I asked a woman out in the park. She looked attractive, right? We went on four dates outside. She never took her mask off. My buddy's like, bro, what does she look like, dude? Hmm? What does she look like, bro? I was like, she's not Asian. That's literally <laughs> all the data I have. All right, half of you are like, is that racist? Can we laugh at that? I don't, I don't know. I have to check the rule book. 
tensions are so high in this country. This is it. It's crazy. It's too much happened at once, you know? We had the BLM movement. We had the pandemic. I was like, geez, I got to get a vaccine and get a black friend? This was too, it was too much. It's too much at once. It's rough, man. Found out all sorts. Of, found out I, I was racist. I didn't know. Someone told me. People could just tell you what you are now. You're lactose intolerant. Yeah, shut up. Yeah, you are. It's the new normal. It's the new normal. No, it's the old crazy. We're going back to old and crazy. There's nothing new and normal about it. Okay. I miss the old days, you know, when you just treated people by how they were, you know? Someone was a dick, you're a dick to them. Someone's nice, you're nice. Now they're like, oh, I don't think so. You have to look at their skin color their gender. There's a whole checklist of things you have to do before you even say hello to somebody. It makes you crazy. It makes you so self-conscious. I'm talking to minorities like they're mentally retarded. And I'm like, hi, I see you. I hear you. I'm sorry. I don't know why. I'm sorry. Some money I don't have. I think of some drink tickets. I'm sorry. I had to do one of those uh, diversity training meetings. Anybody have to do those at work? Yeah. yeah. Fun, huh? This is what's so weird about it all. It's white people telling other white people how to talk to black people. That's fucking off. That's a little off, isn't it? Wouldn't you want a representative there? Be like, no, 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 that's actually... I'm gonna fact check that. But I had a 21-year-old white woman tell us how to talk to the minorities, and it really started to screw with me. Right after the meeting, I go up to a black employee. I was like, hey, uh, Ray, I just want to let you know, man. Um, I see you. I hear you. Let's go. Brian should he beat the shit out of me, right? I don't know what. I don't see how it's, how this is helping. <laughs> I'm living in a total clown world now. We are... Treat, we are treating adults like children and children like adults. That's, we are. We're treating adults like children and children like adults. You go up to a 40 year old, you're like, you want to get a cheeseburger? You got to get your push to shot. Got to show me your band aid. Then some eight year old's like, I want to cut my dick off. We're like, that sounds responsible. We're not going to challenge that. Take the car, go do your thing. Are you nuts? Look, I understand, man. Some of these kids, this might be real, but like, give it some time before you start just chopping stuff off and folding it in. It's quite a process. <laughs> you can't just believe kids on face value. I mean, it's, it's an insane thing. When I was 10 years old, I was convinced I was a pirate, okay? <laughs> my parents didn't chop my leg off and have it replaced with a wooden peg, right? <laughs> no. They gave me an eye patch, a stuffed parrot, and two weeks later, I realized I wasn't gay. <laughs> I had an interesting upbringing, you know? It's, it's easy to put people in a box, like you're just this thing, you're the white guy. But I had a weird upbringing. When I was seven years old, my dad gave me the talk. You guys know the talk, right? Where your dad sits you down at the edge of the bed and explains how, you know, <clears throat> he's gay. Um, <laughs> You know that old talk? How old were you guys? <laughs> this was in the 90s, man. We've come so far. We don't give it enough credit. We've come so far. My dad in the 90s legally wasn't allowed to get married. Nobody talked about LGB. I can't do the whole thing, but nobody talked <laughs> for time. I don't have, we don't have the time. We're running out of time. All I knew about gay when I was seven, when my dad came out, was that's what you called each other on the playground if you like, couldn't go high on the swings. Like, oh, you're fucking gay. You're like, oh, fuck, gay, dude. That's it, we didn't know what it was. So can you imagine me when I'm seven years old, my dad's like, I'm leaving the family, I'm gay. I'm like, dad, you are overreacting. I was gay last week, I was a huge fag. I just had to beat up Tommy, now I'm back. Let's go get his dad, come on, put the boxes down, come on. We could turn this ship around. I thought I had a pass though, you know, for my uh, violent, powerful oppression that I give off. <laughs> Doesn't work anymore. They're like, that's not your lived experience. Shut up, sit down. I used to go on dates, women would love it. Like my dad's gay. They're like, oh my God, that must've been so fun. That must've been so fun. This was 1993. 
These women act like my dad's just walking around like, yes, yes. No, he was a repressed Irish Catholic gay in the 90s. Bruce Willis looking guy, really tough, but still gay. It was confusing. <laughs> if he'd come home and be like, clean this fucking shit up. We're seeing Les Mis at five o'clock. You better fucking clean this up, all right? Get in the car, you little faggots. I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna fucking belt on. It's weird. My dad couldn't come out of the closet. You could lose your job, you could lose your family, all that stuff, all right? You know what I realized in therapy recently? If it wasn't for homophobia, I wouldn't be alive. <laughs> that fucked me up. <laughs> that fucked me up, dude. Because I don't like homophobia, but I love my life. I love my life. I'm, I'm in two worlds. I'm conflicted, you know? It's conflict of interest. I see some homophobia. Of course, I want to condemn it, but, you know, I'm give them a little credit, you know? Some guy yelling at two gay guys, hey, shut the fuck up, you leave them alone. Guys, get out of here, get out, I got this. I got, I'm an ally, I'm an ally? Shut the fuck up, okay? You're just jealous, you piece of shit. They're out there living their life, you shut the fuck up! But thank you for your service. I got him, go ahead, run along. Run along. You know, I like to just bring, this show together and sort of bring the crowd together as one and uh, talk about politics. Um, <laughs> it's time for some unification. It's just tough having a president just dying in front of your eyes though. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just tough. It's, 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 it's interesting. <laughs> I love watching the end of a Biden speech. He'll just say goodbye. Hey, well, thank you so much. It's hard having a president who has to do the I have to poop walk to get on the fucking. <laughs> Slowly tell us if we're in World War III. He'll start out strong though, Biden, you know? He'll start out strong in his speech. But then he'll do this thing where he'll end up whispering like the most important part of the speech. You know what I mean? I'm just like, it's just the greatest country in the world. Yeah, come on, Jack. We're, we're going to build back better. But first, we need, we need to stop. Systematic. <laughs> Who is coaching his speeches? Owen Wilson? What is going on? <sighs> I mean, wow. I mean, come on. We're totally building them back better. I mean, Putin is a bad dude. He's a bad dude. You're Derek Zuland. I loved watching the rallies. It's funny. You watch a Biden rally, it's just like eight cars. You're like, honk, honk. And the Trump rallies are some kind of weird social experiment. Bizarre. First 10 minutes of a Trump rally is him just clapping at the crowd. Just... Proud to be. They had to loop the song like a thousand times. And they have the most uninterested people behind them. I don't think they know where they are. And he's got to point somebody out in the crowd. Nobody knows. Where's John? Excuse me. Where's John? Where is he? Where the fuck is he? Where's Mark? That son of a bitch. Where is he? Excuse me. Where the fuck is Mark? Ooh, what are you talking about? <laughs> He'll tell some nonsensical story about wherever he is. He pretends like he knows everything. We're here in the great Brooklyn, New York. Look at us. So good. Brooklyn, New York. Williamsburg, Brooklyn. So strong. So strong. The great William, the great Will, Will, you know, Will. Will was a great guy. I think he was like, 
Invented the coffee bean, right, John? He invented the coffee bean. He's so strong. Espresso, espresso, it's the espresso. Capital of the world is so good. So good. Bedford Ave, it's where the bed was invented, I think, right? And the Ford, and the Ford, the great Ford. Great William inventing beds and cars. That's what we're doing here. We're bringing beds back. We're making the great, we're gonna open the bed factory and we're gonna make so many things, so great. And he plays a diversity. He has all these pre-printed signs with all different people. So many people here. We have white people for Trump, and we have, frankly, maybe a Mexican guy. I can't tell. He's got a, he's got a tight goatee. He's got the goatee. He's so tight. So many but women for Trump. So strong. So this is maybe a guy. Maybe, frankly, could be gender fluid. They call it fluid. They call it fluid. We can't even say. I can't say. He could, he could go either way. Look at him. He could go either way. Everybody's flip-flopping and doing all the things, putting everything. Look at this. Maybe I think a black person here. They're we're giving her opportunities. Look at her. Opportun Look at these right next to the camera. She's famous. We're making her famous. We're making her so famous. Right? It's like, don't, before I was president, black people probably couldn't even walk. Do you remember that? They couldn't walk. They couldn't speak English, and now they're doing such great things. They're doing great things. They're frankly doing so good under my... And they weren't doing so good before. You know, she knows what I'm doing. She knows. Then he'd do the opposite of Biden. He'd get really quiet, and then he'd scream his trigger words, right? But excuse me, we have to be careful. Excuse me. We have to be careful because the radical left... Excuse me, the radical left... The radical, shh, the, ra shh, the radical left, excuse me, the radical left. They're rapists! They're murderers! They're fucking our kids at the border, chopping their dicks off and cheering them into vaginas, you know this. But the economy's so good. Guys, you've been so much fun. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you, Brooklyn. Thank you so much. Keep it going for your host, everybody. Good night, thank you guys. Thank you.